we give children the experience of a command and control system instead of the experience of working out over time a mutual system. There's a circularity here. This means that there's no natural superiority. In other words, we need to think in terms of a non-hierarchical world. It's very difficult to understand hierarchy in, in circularity. Circularity means if A then B and if B then A. And it seems that we have um, a way of looking at the world which moves us from flatness into hierarchy and that that is something that we do with our thinking and it's very powerful and very useful, but it's not something that we should be uh, imposing on the world. It's something we should understand as a way of thinking that leads to certain types of understanding. No wonder so many people found cybernetics and systems theory unintelligible. We are a society that is to put simply, counter-cybernetic. Think of humans as different from and against or ruling over, quote, nature. I happen to be with you of the opinion that's a very important connection there. And I have invented the retardation of decay. Almost everything, everything decays. Sooner or later, Euphemisms for the word decay is, for instance, living. Everybody knows we are dying. But we have found the word living, which can sound so much nicer, right? The nicest message. It's the rich, more gets the pleasure. Ain't it all a bleeding shine? We have structured a system not understanding the principle of requisite variety, not understanding this feedback phenomenon. When you look at a system which you say, oh, this is going wrong, how do we put it right? You should start by saying, why have we designed this stupid system to do the wrong thing? This is the requisite variety song. <laughs> the problem is that we're still in the Shannon information age. Shannon messaging means that you're going to send me something that I can already expect. And all I have to do is figure out, did you mean this or that? That or that or that or that or that or that? But the Shannon model doesn't allow me to understand how I can know something new. In a conversation, say about that video camera or the other one which I see backing it up, uh, I don't know, guys, or is there another one waiting around? <laughs> well, what happens is that we learn more about each other, you and I, and I of you. We learn how we not only agree about the nature of a couple of somewhatly different oriented video cameras, but we also learn how we disagree. And in so doing, we learn about each other. And we do that a darn sight more than we learn about video cameras. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm not saying we don't learn about video cameras, but I am saying we learn much more about ourselves. And I think the key for cybernetics is not the definition, it's about the vision for a different world. The late Amos Wilson said, if we desire a better world, we must name the world we desire. Desires. I was thinking that perhaps we should reflect on the nature of our problem. Problems are always conflicts of desires. If cybernetics taught me anything, it's that 
physical forces don't make this world, humans make this world. It's the decisions we make, it's the organizations we build. I'm learning that I'm doing really cybernetic work. So now it makes sense, resonate. How could cybernetic be useful, such as feminism, for instance, for race and ethnical conflicts and conflict transformation? For I mean, I'm, I would be very much interested in that, you know, like conjunction. If he could declare peace, to be one of the needs, like hunger, which has to be met by food, and thirst, which has to be met by drink, and tiredness, which has to be met by sleep, and then you sleep and sleep, so that you can do something or to become tired again. So this, this is the definition of needs. Needs are conditions that have to be met so that they can happen again. There are one description of life. One, not the only one, but one description of life is that needs be met so that they happen again. If I could have peace sorted into the table of content the title of needs, it would give us a different English language. We would understand, for instance, that we need peace. And since we need peace, we have to meet it with our conflict. We have to meet it with our differences. So that there not be war, but that the need that the need for peace be satisfied. What we say is tied to the system in which we're living. So in the system that we currently have, in which atrocities are passed off as issues like war, you know, war is a news issue, war is an atrocity. The language that we use that's available to us is the traces left of the system we're living in. No language in the world has a way in its grammar to express systemic causation. If you change Lakoff's statement or claim to no language in the world has a way in its grammar to express cybernetic relationships, would you agree with that? Well, that is the challenge, I think, of cybernetic. We would like to be able at last to know how to teach language to say what we would like to think. So become teachers of language and not language teachers.